Hello friends, this is Team Super Simplified and today we are going to discuss the current affairs for third week of March 2016 where we will cover current affairs from March 15 to March 21st. Okay, so let's get started. So first news item is about ExoMars program. So what is this program? This is an unmanned mission, unmanned mission uh, where we will be sending a rover on Mars. So we will be sending a rover from Earth to Mars to the red planet. Mars is also known as red planet. And this is an astrobiology project. What is astrobiology? It is a study of life in the universe. Okay. And why it is being conducted? Uh, this is to study the past and present habitability, uh, the conditions of survival on Mars. So you can see a shift here. Earlier we were only focused on the present habitability, but now we are also looking at uh, the conditions prevailing in the past which could have supported life so that we get some clues about um, the living conditions on Mars. Okay. And who is behind this project? This is a joint venture between Europe and Russia, European Space Agency and Roscosmos. These are the two agencies responsible for this. And uh, this will be conducted in two phases. 2016 phase is currently on and 2018 will see another phase of the project. Then an important question, uh, why only Mars? Why so many probes are being launched on Mars? Even uh, India has launched uh, Mangalyan. So why so many probes on Mars? Because uh, it is special planet. It is very similar to Earth. That is why there are very high chances, there is very high probability that it may uh, support life. Now when we talk about similarity with Earth, then what similarity are we talking about? Uh, there are three parts of this similarity. First one is, this is also a terrestrial planet. There are two types of planet in our solar system, terrestrial and Jovian. So this is a terrestrial planet. Second similarity is the rotation. The rotational, uh, the time taken to uh, you know complete one uh, rotation is uh, similar. Rotation and revolution both are uh, quite similar with Earth. And uh, another reason is the tilt of its rotational axis. So this is Mars. This does not rotate like this on this axis, but the axis is little tilted, similar to Earth. Earth is also having a tilted axis. So what is the outcome of this tilt? Seasons. Seasons are possible because of this tilt. So this is also one of the similarities. Then uh, one more similarity is the geology of the planet. Geology means uh, the terrestrial conditions, the terrain of the planet is uh, similar to Earth. You can find the uh, the traces of uh, polar ice caps in the past. Then you have deserts, craters, valleys and all those uh, uh, physical features, right? Okay, so these are the similarities. Uh, now we will cover some extra side points. Does Mars have any um, moons, satellites? Yes, there are two satellites of moon. The names are Phobos. Phobos, I'll write it here. Phobos and Deimos. These are the two moons of Mars. Phobos and Deimos. And um, what about the atmosphere of Mars? What is the composition? So important part to remember is 95% of this uh, atmosphere is CO2 carbon dioxide okay why is it called red planet why does it appear red like earth appears blue because of the water so it is a blue planet so it appears red why because of uh, iron oxide what is iron oxide Fe2O3 what is the formula Fe2O3 this is the formula of rust so this gives it a rustic look okay uh, Achha, one more thing, we are sending a rover here, but uh, have we sent any rover in past on Mars? Yes, there are already two rovers which are operational on Mars and which will be uh, like host to this third rover. So can you name them? There are two rovers already on Mars. Uh, Curiosity is one of them and other one is Opportunity. Curiosity and Opportunity are already on Mars. So you should remember all these keywords when you when someone talks about Mars. At least these uh, some important keywords you should remember. Uh, another keyword is Gale Crater. This, this they may ask in one of the MCQs that on which planet this Gale Crater is located. So Gale Crater is the location where uh, Curiosity had landed. Okay. So this was uh, quite in news. Then since we have uh, come to the topic of uh, universe, let's uh, uh, complete some important topics here some subtopics so this year there was a question on goldilocks zone goldilocks zone uh, in prelims 2015 there was a question on goldilocks zone so what is goldilocks zone actually so if you take a star and the uh, planets revolving around it then you have certain planets where the chances of finding life is more 
what are those uh, planets how to identify them so this star will emit some light and heat in this direction so some of the planets may not experience that much uh, which are very far so there is a zone near this planet and uh, this this sun uh, or the star around which uh, in 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 which the chances of life are more because you can find liquid water here so this habitable zone this habitable zone around a star is known as goldilocks zone right this is goldilocks zone and this is not for our solar system that can this is a generic term which can be applicable to all all the solar systems in the universe all right so this is goldilocks zone another important thing is the asteroid belt do you know where is asteroid belt before that we'll complete our understanding of uh, we will uh, touch upon the understanding of uh, terrestrial and jovian planets since we have talked of some jargons in the previous slide we'll explain that so what are terrestrial and jovian planets so you have sun here this we are talking about our own solar system now this is sun then you have mercury venus earth and mars right these four planets are terrestrial planets and after that you have another four planets what are those jupiter saturn uranus and neptune pluto is not a planet now it is a dwarf planet okay these are jovian planets jovian means uh, jupiter like okay what is the difference between terrestrial and jovian planets difference is if you uh, see the terrestrial planet it will have rock surface okay but jovian planets are massive planets which are composed mostly of gases only a small portion inside the core is uh, rocky so if you are sending a probe then you will be passing through gas gaseous area from here and finally you will land on a, a rocky surface which is lying far inside it is a small core so this is the major difference right all these four planets are terrestrial and i was talking about the asteroid belt so where is asteroid belt asteroid belt lies here between mars and jupiter so it separates your uh, terrestrial and jovian planets this could be one of the mcqs okay and this asteroid belt com contains a dwarf planet can you name it dwarf planet one dwarf planet is uh, present in this asteroid belt the name is ceres c e r e s okay there is another uh, term known as kuiper belt k u i p e r kuiper belt where is it located kahan par hai kuiper belt so that belt is located after neptune so here you have kuiper belt and it is quite wide it is quite wide and you will find lot of uh, uh, asteroid kind objects flying objects uh, in this particular uh, zone so you have asteroids comets small bodies made up of ice and all that and this is uh, not a particular line or something this is a kind of zone so this spans a huge area which starts from 30 astronomical unit 30 au to 50 au so this is quite the expanse is quite huge 30 au to 50 au what is au what is astronomical unit it is a unit of measuring distance in the universe what all units do we have for measuring distance in the universe when we talk about the universe you have astronomical unit you have light year parsec parallactic second right these are some of the important uh, units of distance Now, what is 1 au how do you define it 1 au is the average distance between sun and earth sun and earth so because we will understand very easily the things which are very relative to this distance that is why we have devised this uh, unit so if i say mars is 1.5 au from sun then what do you understand you have sun here then you have earth this is 1 au and just exactly after half of this distance 0.5 au you have mars so this is quite easy to understand instead of saying this is 1 million 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 billion some kilometers right so this is how we simplify things that is why we have so many uh, units to measure distance in the universe so let's move ahead another important news item was about the declaration of critically endangered species in india 
so 50 critically endangered species were uh, announced recently so the news was that uh, out of the 96000 species of animal available in india 50 are critically endangered who made this announcement which agency is responsible for labeling animals as critically endangered in india it is zoological survey of india and if it is about plants then it is botanical survey of india and what are the various risk categories now see this is how you have to read newspaper you should not restrict yourself only to the headline or to the facts which are given in the newspaper you should invoke the curiosity the faculty of curiosity in your mind and then you should go ahead and explore little more about that news item so every time it is not possible that is why we are here and we'll uh, help you in that particular uh, aspect so these are the different risk categories you start from here and the severity of the risk increases in this direction so first you have least concerned no need to bother at all then near risk category it is coming near the threat and these three are the threatened categories you have vulnerable then you have endangered and then after a certain stage you have critically endangered and then the species becomes extinct in the wild extinct in the wild means now it is uh, only it can only be seen in zoos and other places where which are controlled by human beings and then finally it becomes extinct which you cannot uh, that this species is not available on the planet earth anymore so these are some of the risk categories so critical endangered is here okay and who has devised this list this list was uh, uh, prepared by this categorization was devised by IUCN International Union for Con Conservation of Nature and there was a question in 2015 prelims on IUCN so now see this is how the shift uh, is happening in the examination pattern and uh, 2014 they have asked a question on Bombay Natural History Society BNHS because they were publishing a lot of uh, studies on uh, drying lakes in uh, around Bombay and all those things right so uh, you should not restrict yourself only to these particular things you go forward and uh, explore little more about other peripheral topics which may be important be curious that is the keyword for today okay that is the tagline for today be curious then when does a species become critically endangered so there must be some criteria based on which they uh, declare this right so what are those there are actually five criteria based on which this uh, species these species are declared uh, critically endangered and any one of these five criteria any one is satisfied means the species becomes critically endangered what are these criteria population have declined or will decrease by greater than 80 percent remember these numbers that's it 80 percent over last 10 years or three generations have a restricted geographical range means the species is endemic this is a technical word for species which are found only in one particular area endemic e n d m i i'll write in capital letters i don't know if my writing is legible okay then third point small population size of less than 250 individuals so you remember this what, 250 individuals and uh, uh, it is continuing to decline at 25 percent in three years or one generation then very small or restricted population of fewer than 50 mature individuals and finally uh, high probability of extinction in the wild any one criteria is satisfied the species goes into the list of critically endangered now uh, they also ask about these species okay this is also another trend which is uh, seen in the pre previous year papers but we cannot con uh, complete all the 50 we cannot discuss all the 50 but uh, we will try to uh, cover the important ones so first one is the bro antler deer which is also known as sangai in manipuri language it is also known as eld steer it is only found in manipur that is why it is very very important it is only found in manipur and it is a state animal of manipur and this is how it looks like right beautiful right that this looks like a state animal yes and uh, it is concentrated in the kibul lamjao national park which is uh, located near imphal okay kibul lamjao national park and there's a lake near it loktak lake and a part of this uh, national park is located inside the lake okay and this is the only floating national park in the world how is it floating actually uh, then you should know about fumdi also have you heard this term fumdi p h u m d i uh, i'll explain it to you so this is loktak lake in Im near imphal and uh, you have a lot of vegetation around the lake as usual and then uh, this vegetation gets decomposed all these decomposed clusters come together they form aggregates 
and slowly these aggregates come together and then they form island like structure which floats on water these island like structures are known as pumdi in the local language and on these islands this uh, national park is located that is why it is uh, you know floating national park okay so what are pumdis this may be one of the questions in mcq so it is made up of decomposed material and this is in the loktak lake where is loktak lake in manipur near impal population is 204 less than 250 you remember that number 250 right so this is less than 250 as per 2013 census that is why it is in critically endangered list another animal is dugonga seagull this is the favorite of upsc because they have asked uh, it in 2013 uh, 2013 or 2014 i am not very sure but one of these years and 2015 this year also 2015 prelims also the previous uh, year uh, two times they have asked so that is why it is important now this is how it looks like it is a uh, herbivorous animal so you can see it feeding on grass sea grass okay and these other species are uh, coolly uh, you know located around it otherwise if it was a carnivorous animal then uh, the picture would be different now this is herbivorous and uh, this is the habitat it feeds on sea grass beds it is found in lagoons bays and calm sheltered water because grass is found in those regions only and where are these regions located in india now if i find uh, ask you where is it found in india so wherever these conditions are prevailing where gulf of mannar park bay gulf of kutch andaman and nicobar islands now let's see on the map of india where all these places are located because this is also very important now gulf of mannar is somewhere here this part is uh, the gulf gulf of mannar okay this is gulf of mannar and then you have park strait here and this area is known as park bay this is park bay this is gulf of mannar and here you have park strait acha what is a strait ye strait kya hota hai a uh, strait is a channel which connects two uh, water bodies two major water bodies and where is gulf of kutch gulf of kutch is here and this is gulf of kambay so don't get confused sometimes people get confused between these two so this is gulf of kambay हिंदी में इसको खंबात की खाड़ी बोलते हैं गल्फ ऑफ कैम्बे एंड दिस इज गल्फ ऑफ कच एंड द मेन थ्रेड फॉर दिस एनिमल इज पोचिंग फॉर मीट पॉपुलेशन इज टू फिफ्टीन टू थाउजेंड एज पर टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन सेंसेस सो दैट सेम नंबर रिपीट्स नाउ नेक्स्ट एनिमल इज गंजीज रिवर डॉल्फिन सो येस डॉल्फिन आर फाउंड इन गंगा रिवर ऑल्सो एंड इट ऑल्सो नोन एज सूसु एंड दिस इज हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक द पिक्यूलियर फीचर अबाउट इंडियन डॉल्फिन इज द बीक this is very different from uh, normal dolphin the population is uh, around 300 which is left now okay and then the main threat is the loss of habitat and it is found in ganga and brahmaputra river system see in this map okay this is where it is found so why is under threat because this is a densely populated region this is the plain region of india the great plains and this is densely populated so a lot of human activities lot of pollution lot of construction encroachment and lot of dams are there so that is why it is threatened only 300 are left and the next uh, in the list is great indian bustard which is a bird which looks like this it is a state bird of rajasthan once it was a very common bird but now you can find only 30 so this is the severity of the problem you can understand the importance of this list and conservation program which is required the seriousness of the issue only 30 birds are left and it was a common bird at a time right and uh, uh, it was once a national bird candidate also and interesting fact is that it is a state bird of rajasthan but all the 30 are also not found in rajasthan rajasthan has around 13 birds only others are found in maharashtra and gujarat okay then uh, it was once a national bird candidate also it was a competitor of peacock for national bird uh, uh, designation but it could not uh, go through okay so let let's come to the next news item which is the saint hood to mother teresa so what is going to happen mother teresa is going to be canonized the process of uh, awarding saint hood to someone is known as canonization so canonization is the process by which uh, someone is declared to be a saint and this pro- this happens this also has a procedure you know canonization is a process so this is the fourth stage of the complete process and this is what the complete process looks like the step one is servant of god then venerable then blessed and then finally a person is called saint 
so this is a four step process we will discuss this in the coming slides before that let's have a look at quick facts about mother teresa so she was born in 1910 in macedonia it is a european country and she started order of missionaries of charity in kolkata which was a charitable uh, society which was started by mother teresa and then uh, she also received bharat ratna and nobel peace prize she died in the year 1997 at the age of 87 and she is going to be canonized I means sainthood is to be given to mother teresa on 4th september 2016 Now let's come to the conceptual part of this news item. What is sainthood and how is it attained or how is it granted? The process is known as canonization. The process of uh, uh, you know declaring someone as a saint is known as canonization. And earlier in olden times it was done by public opinion as there is a popular belief that a particular person is saint, he is healing people and all those miracles he is performing then he was considered saint. but there were a uh, lot many saints cropping up suddenly so that is why the pope at that time pope john 15 in the 10th century long back he devised a process he so this happens in four stages the first stage is servant of god you approach your local bishop and then you then he studies your life and that whether you are following all the religious principles or not whether you are leading a pious life or not all those things and if he is satisfied then he recommends your case to the vatican right and then you get uh, the title of servant of god then a team of theologians studies your case in vatican theologians are the people who uh, study religion and then pope he, they recommend your name to the pope and he gives you the title of uh, venerable okay and then the third stage is attained when you perform a posthumous miracle so these first and second stage are possible during lifetime but uh, third and fourth stage are only possible posthumously after death so a person is uh, titled blessed this process is known as beatification after confirming one posthumous miracle so after death someone has to perform one posthumous miracle how is that that possible uh, actually people pray in your name and uh, someone gets healed so that is considered as a miracle so those kind of things are required to be done then uh, fourth step is uh, the sainthood it is known as the process is known as canonization so after second miracle the title of saint is given so uh, mother teresa is currently having the third status she is called blessed mother teresa of kolkata so beatification has already been uh, completed and now she will be canonized uh, there are already around 3000 saints in roman catholic sect of christianity and uh, uh, canonization means your name will be added to the official canon of the church roman catholic church and you will be you will become a uh, a part of you know the recognized list of uh, saints okay let's move to the next news item thin qua elected as the first civilian president of myanmar so this is our uh, neighboring country and this is important news item from international relations perspective is elected first civilian pri- president of myanmar to abhi isse pehle kya hota tha what was happening before prior to this uh, myanmar one coup happened military coup happened in 1962 military coup in 1962 and uh, you know the military influence was very high in the governance from that time even the parliament had some nominated members compulsorily from military and this is the first time uh, democracy you know democratic cycle has just begun in this country so you can see around india also a lot of countries are uh, uh, you know the polity is changing recently nepal has seen some drastic changes then uh, myanmar also okay so you keep a note of all these things what is happening around us so tinkwa is a close ad and advisor of nobel peace prize uh, laureate ong sang suki so suki was uh, uh, in highlights from a long time she was a political prisoner for 15 years there was military rule in the country and she was uh, proposing democracy so she was fighting for the revival of democracy in the country and uh, finally she is successful and uh, presidential elections have taken place recently and a civilian president uh, was elected and what is the presidential election process in myanmar So as per Myanmar's constitution there are two chambers of uh, uh, parliament upper house and lower house and both of them will nominate one presidential candidate each and one candidate the third candidate will be nominated by the MPs who belong to military so military MPs nominate one so you have three candidates running in the presidential race 
one from the upper house one from the lower house and one from the side of military mps nominated by them okay now important and interesting question is suki is so famous and she was uh, the torch bearer in this entire revolution for fight for democracy and all then why uh, did she not become the president she is actually a foreign affairs minister now so why didn't she choose that particular thing the problem was that the constitution bars her from contesting for the president why because constitution of myanmar says that a person whose children have passport of uh, another country cannot uh, become president so that is the reason her children hold british passport so this is one of the technical reasons myanmar was also earlier known as burma and it was a part of india it was separated from india in the year 1937 so you should remember this year also okay so let's move ahead march 15 was celebrated as world world consumer rights day and 2016 theme was antibiotics of the menu and they were against uh, the meat raised with the help of antibiotics because lot of antibiotic uh, resistance is growing right so this is a cause of concern for us we'll uh, cover antibiotic resistance in a separate video this is an important uh, area of study this year this was world consumer rights day then when national consumer rights day is celebrated in india it is celebrated on 24 december 1986 because on this date consumer protection act was enacted next news item is un suspends maria sharapova as a goodwill ambassador so maria sharapova who was found guilty in the doping case recently is suspended as goodwill ambassador from united nations so she was found guilty in doping case she is a russian tennis star five times grand slam she failed a doping test which is which was conducted by wada what is wada world anti doping agency this is a uh, apex body for these kind of uh, activities in the sport regulation of these kind of activities then uh, she was suspended by international tennis federation the drug this name is important the drug which was involved in this entire uh, controversy was meldonium we have a separate video on this entire issue actually if you want to know the technicalities why did she take it and how did the drug function how the drug boosts someone's performance all that you can uh, watch that video now you should be aware of two important agencies wada and nada wada is world anti doping agency and nada is national anti doping agency which is indian equivalent of wada then india ranks 118 on un world happiness index so this was recently released by united nations a body of united nations and india ranked very poorly so these are some of the facts which you can quote you know no one is going to ask you that what was a rank there are there is very less probability of this being asked in prelims but you can quote these things while writing uh, answer in mains you know uh, performance of india on various international scales is always important because this gives you a relative picture that what is going on in the world and how are we performing with respect to that all right then out of 157 countries we have ranked 118 it was this index was released by sustainable development solution network sdsn which is a part of united nations and the one of the reasons why we have ranked so poorly is uh, that a lot of weightage was given to inequality this time so top 5 countries we should always know denmark switzerland iceland norway and finland so mostly in all the indexes sdi or anything these countries mostly these countries are on the top the five least happy countries are rwanda benin afghanistan togo syria obviously syria afghanistan burundi so sub african uh, sub saharan countries of africa and uh, some other countries which were war torn in the recent past are obviously uh, expected to be in this uh, bottom line of this uh, particular index then among brics if we compare our performance then brazil ranked 17th russia ranked 56th china is 83rd even south africa was ahead of us 116 and india ranked last among brics nations it ranked 118 If you compare with Indian neighbors, then Nepal ranked better than us, 78. China 83rd. Even Bhutan was better, 84th. Bhutan has a gross national happiness index. We have gross domestic product and all those things, right? Through which we uh, gauge the performance of the country. They have gross national happiness. Pakistan 104, Bangladesh 110, Sri Lanka was better than us, slightly better, 117. 
Afghanistan is the only country in our neighborhood which is behind us 154 so this is how India is performing with respect to this the another news item is Supreme Court allows pictures of CMs governors ministers in government advertisements so there was earlier ruling in 2015 that only president prime minister and chief justice of India were allowed to put their photograph on the advertisements only but then there was a lot of opposition from the states and all that you are not including the chief ministers and the governors and the ministers so now the Supreme Court has ruled that uh, even these people are allowed to put their photographs on these advertisements these recommendations which were which had come earlier were uh, motivated by professor NR Madhava Menon committee which was set up especially for this purpose and this was actually stopped for the development you know to curb the development of personality cult in the uh, democratic functioning of the institutions still some guidelines are uh, there like advertisement should not carry the name of any political party or political uh, party symbol or logo or flag of the party so it is the government which is doing these activities so they should not promote their own party uh, by this uh, these mechanisms now next news item is Goa government accords heritage spirit status to country liquor Feni so Feni is a famous country liquor which is uh, manufactured solely in uh, Goa in the coastal uh, state of Goa it is a country made liquor and uh, it is the first uh, liquor product which got GI tag ge geographical indication tag okay and this is made from coconut and cashew fruit then a constitution bench to decide on national court of appeal so this is very interesting news item so uh, what is national court of appeal this is this will be a parallel court along with uh, supreme court now supreme court is burdened with loss of lot of uh, cases now what they want is supreme court will focus only on certain cases and we will have another uh, court which will be called national court of appeal where all the other type of cases will go so this is being done because equal access to justice is the fundamental right as provided in the constitution and there's long pendency in the uh, Supreme Court a lot of cases are pending and the cost of justice is becoming very high because of that and there is only one Supreme Court which is located at the cap national capital so it is geographically very limiting from for this uh, diverse country right so that is why they want to come up with uh, something like this a national court of appeal which will be a parallel arm of the judiciary the national national court of appeal with regional benches it will have regional benches benches so that uh, the justice can be made accessible in, in your uh, region also then this will deal with the criminal and civil cases only and the constitutional cases and the public law cases will go to the supreme court so supreme, supreme court will be focusing on uh, the important cases and other uh, criminal and civil cases will go to nca the routine cases and it would reduce the number of pending cases the court of cost of justice would come down that is uh, what is being hoped and constitutional amendment is required in the constitution article 130 is to be amended what is article 130 what does it talk article 130 talks about the seat of the supreme court it talks about the supreme court and it also mentions the seat of the supreme court to be in new delhi and he's it, it the, this article says that uh, this can be shifted if the supreme court wants to do so it can be shifted and even regional bench, benches can be set up so this article is to be amended in order to implement this particular scheme but the challenge is that the entire restructuring and you know having a parallel arm of judiciary will be an uh, challenging exercise right so that's all guys that's it from my side uh, in this topic see these videos may be very bulky because we are con uh, covering all the uh, important events of the entire week and uh, we are going in depth into it so uh, but uh, please share your feedback on these and if you have any topic in mind which you would like us to cover then please let us know we will try to take it up in the coming sessions we have already taken up some topics which were suggested by some of our viewers okay and if you like us if you if you would like us to complete this particular uh, series then let us know in the comment section your feedback is very important because we have got a diverse audience so we uh, are not very sure that what do they want so you have to tell us right and please do like comment subscribe and share if you like this video 
please do subscribe because uh, then you will get instant notifications whenever a new lecture is uploaded and you will not miss anything important and that's all for now thank you bye bye